The second Grand Prix of the 2024 F1 season is done and dusted. While it was business as usual for Red Bull and Max Verstappen, it was a miserable outing on the track for the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. The fact that Mercedes does not look as strong as Ferrari this year is getting more and more noticeable around the F1 community. This was initially noticed when Hamilton came in P7 behind Russell at P5 in Bahrain. Instead of fighting Red Bull to regain the world championship, Hamilton's car finished behind a McLaren. This performance is surprising, to say the least, and Mercedes boss Toto Wolff is noticing these crumbles in the team. The track layout highlighted the car's below-par performance in fast corners, and Hamilton and Russell were both outpaced by at least one car from Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren, and Aston Martin, effectively benchmarking Mercedes as fifth fastest. Wolf admitted there was a fundamental issue with the car that meant it struggled on high-speed corners. Hamilton suggested that it may take some time to improve the W15, and thus there could be some difficult weekends ahead. Since the drama of the 2021 season, which saw Hamilton lose the record eight drovers title on the last lap of the last race in Abu Dhabi, Mercedes have struggled to compete with Red Bull. Under the new financial regulations, the team more than others has been forced to slim down to meet the budget cap and this together with the loss of on-track dominance has had an effect on some of the team's brightest and best. It could be argued Hamilton has been on the inside looking out and has seen the talent draining away from the team which influenced his decision to leave for Ferrari next season. With the W15 having seemingly been struggling with bouncing during the event in Jeddah, an issue that particularly affected the squad during the past two seasons, Hamilton feels that Mercedes have some areas to focus on improving as the F1 paddock prepares to roll on to the next race on the calendar in Australia. It's going to be challenging in these next races. I think all the high-speed circuits, we're going to be at a disadvantage with the package we currently have. But we're good in the lower speed, and some of the medium speed we're not so bad, it's really the high, so we need to add performance. Hamilton wasn't happy on Thursday and switched to a bigger wing for Friday that gave the car more stability but cost time on the straights. He progressed through the first two qualifying sessions in 11th and 10th positions, and then took eighth when it mattered in Q3, a place behind Russell. He stressed that bouncing was making life particularly difficult in the first part of the lap. It wasn't a really good qualifying at all. I really struggled with the car, and then FP3, I was happier with the car, with a slightly bigger wing, but I was losing two tenths in the straight. But I gained some stability back, and I thought I would carry that into qualifying. But unfortunately, the bouncing is still there. It makes it very, very difficult to push through that for a session. That's why we were so slow in that first sector. Even with differing approaches to the race, both Hamilton and Russell struggled to get the best out of the W15 in the high-speed sections and struggled to keep up with McLaren and Ferrari. Russell came across the line in sixth, while Hamilton, after finally stopping late in the race for fresh tires, finished ninth and was beaten by debutant Oliver Behrman, who finished an impressive seventh. Russell believes Mercedes is getting slower rather than rival Formula One teams getting faster during race weekends. Russell likened the race weekend to the Bahrain season opener. There, Hamilton led a 1-2 in FP2. Russell then qualified third and finished the GP in fifth. But rather than this dropping back being owed to other teams improving as the round wears on, Russell has attributed it to Mercedes getting slower across the sessions. We're still really trying to understand this car because we have shown true performance at points over the last two weekends. FP1, straight out of the box, we were top of the timesheets and always in the top three. FP2, P2. Then both weekends, the pace just falling away from us. That hasn't been our competitors getting faster. That's been us getting slower. So. We need to understand why that is. Russell crossed the line in Saudi Arabia, almost 40 seconds behind winner Max, with Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc completing the podium. He was also beaten by McLaren's Oscar Piastri and Fernando Alonso in the sole surviving Aston Martin. Russell and Hamilton had complained about their cars bouncing throughout the weekend, but the former reckoned the problems for the W15 were more widespread. I think there's more to it. It's so complex these days. These cars are so complicated. When you couple that with the tires, the tires are very difficult as well. Right now, I don't have the answers. It's becoming more and more obvious that Hamilton is not comfortable in the car that he is driving. 
Aside from all the radio complaints, his position in the pecking order speaks volumes. But what is the main problem that Mercedes is facing that prevents them from giving the seven-time world champion a competitive car? While many factors contributed to Hamilton's downfall in Mercedes, the car is not the only problem. According to Wolff's recent report, the team principal has narrowed down the reason for the W15 not performing. What makes this case more curious is that it has nothing to do with what happens on the track. A recent report from Wolf states that the main issue the team has been facing is with its simulators. We have a big problem. Our sensors and simulations say that in a certain speed range, we should have a certain amount of aerodynamic load, but in reality, we don't. This begins to explain why Mercedes is going through such a tough time securing podiums. Lewis and George are currently fourth in the Constructors' Championship, behind Red Bull, Ferrari, and McLaren, respectively. This comes as a huge shock, considering the team's eight years of domination. Ever since the new regulations in F1, which implemented a budget cut, Mercedes has stopped performing like they used to. And to make things worse, it's Hamilton who has the worse end of the deal. While Russell is managing to score good points in the W15, Hamilton still needs to get comfortable. The W15's main problem highlighted by Wolf was the aerodynamics not recording correctly in the simulator. This leaves the team unable to identify the problem to make improvements to provide the drivers with a car worth battling the likes of Red Bull and Ferrari. However, judging from the recent performances of the two drivers, it is getting clear who is the scoring Mercedes driver now. Ever since Hamilton and Russell got into the W14, the drivers knew that it would be a tough season for them. While they barely managed to finish second, it was clear that a lot of work needed to be done to regain their dominance. Now in 2024, it's getting more and more evident that younger driver has the edge over Hamilton. Formula One has its first in-season free weekend coming up before returning to action at Albert Park for the Australian Grand Prix, Shovlin revealing that the aerodynamics and vehicle dynamics departments are looking to cook up some experiments in the effort to extract more performance from the W15. Asked if Mercedes's learnings from Jeddah can be integrated into their Australian Grand Prix preparations, Mercedes engineer Andrew Shovlin replied, Yeah, there's definitely data that we're picking through from Jeddah. We're also looking at data from the Bahrain race, Bahrain test, and we will come up with a plan for how we approach free practice in Melbourne. But it's not just based on what we did in Jeddah. There's a lot of work going on within aerodynamics department, vehicle dynamics department. We're trying to design some experiments there that will hopefully give us a direction that's good for performance. So, what are your thoughts? Do you think Mercedes is going to be stuck in the midfield this season? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest F1 news.